All right, what's up, guys? My name is Evan. This is my dad, Phil Moore. Uh, we are co-owners of Fit First Footwear and Lady Sport in Burnaby and Vancouver, BC. So glad you're joining us. We're going to dive in to the history of Hoka, stiff rocker shoes, and what they're doing, the impact they're making on the sales floor. Let's do this. I think we need to define some of the terms that we'll be using throughout these videos and really look at the science, rip away the brand, and dive right into rocker, stiffness, toe spring. With Hoka, everyone thinks of this big, thick cushion runner that is kind of like a truck compared to a regular shoe, which is I kind of call trucks and cars, right? Yeah, yeah. So what makes this truck really unique and special? And I think there's a couple of things that get lost in the marketing, and that is that when we talk about Rocker, I talked to one of the local shoe uh, cobblers, and he said, Rocker, we debated amongst our colleagues all the time about how complex a thing it is. But yeah. let's break it down. Rocker, we've got the actual taper of the sole. Here's a shoe where we kind of flat it out to illustrate how this sole tapers and creates a bit of that rocker. This is an old school orthopedic uh, feature which you apex it at different places. That's all complex and it works. It, it helps to split the foot. Then this is what we call toe spring. This is the last, and you can see where the internal, there's an internal toe spring. Now he referred to it as internal rocker and external rocker. There's all kinds of ways, but ultimately we kind of cheat. We call it the rocker profile. So the rocker profile of the shoe is how you combine rocker with toe spring to get this motion and splinting the foot. That's really what makes Hoka special. And the way they've done it, as he said, is they've had a magical way of making that work, putting those concepts together to make a rocker that is so functional for everyday life. Okay, so I'm hearing rocker, toe spring, Stiffness has got to play a huge role. Well, it's a huge deal. You, you nailed it right there. I mean, we've all, you look at the shoes on the wall, whoever makes these, all these cars that are up there, they all have this rocker profile. Mm -hmm. They all have some version of it. But like a rocking horse, you make a rocking horse out of plastic, it doesn't really work. You make it out of wood and it's stiff, then you get this working, then you get this rocker and splinting the forefoot and moving from heel to toe pretty seamlessly and what we call quietly. Which when you're running an ultra marathon at 100 miles, you don't want your feet dancing. You don't want them singing. You want them to be quiet, and that's how you can go forever. When they made these shoes originally as a problem solver, they, they took the thick sole, but they were really unstable on the trails. So he took his Dremel out, and he Dremeled out the shoe like a canoe to see you inside the framework, the wrap sole, the okay. cup sole. Yeah, and that does a couple of really important things. By sitting inside the shoe, inside this framework, yeah, when he Dremeled it out, he lost thickness. But having the sidewalls of that wrap sole like a tennis shoe, he gained lateral support. So you sit inside the framework, that gives you, uh, that gives you stability on the frontal plane, yeah. which from a podiatry standpoint and orthopedic standpoint, that's a big deal. Yeah. And so you get that, but you also get this, this stiffness and the stability from heel to toe. So it becomes a completely stable unit all the way around. Right. And that, that wrap sole uh, aided in stiffness. Because if you have sidewalls, it's not gonna bend this way. So you lost thickness, but you gain the other. Yeah, so thickness, sidewalls, maybe a plate, and this rocker all combined for this magic of Hoka, which really is is what, what drives us every day. Now, before we head into part two of our video series and dive into specific models, what sort of foot pathologies are we taking into consideration with shoes like this? Injuries, um, without saying that they're definitely solutions, but where are you finding success in fitting for Hoka? Well, I think all the four foot pathologies, whether we sort of mask that with the term metatarsalgia, okay. ball of the foot, algae pain. Pain across, yeah. Yeah, hallux limitus, hallux rigidus, post-surgeries, neuromas, uh, arthritis. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it can also, you know, have this, this other effect, positive effect on plantar fasciitis, Achilles, calf, it kind of works up the kinetic chain. And, and the, really the conundrum is, is how does stiff rocker, how do the sidewalls, how does all this supportive shoe uh, manifest itself in positively influ influencing so many different foot and ankle pathologies? And that really is the genius of trying to figure out what features in the shoe, and we'll get into a little bit later some other differentiating features from one model to the other that, you, that the podiatrist or the referring uh, a healthcare person has to consider specifically with individual patients. So now that we've learned and defined some of the terms that we are referencing, the pathologies that we'll want to be looking at, let's look a little deeper and explore specific models. Stay tuned for the next video, part two, where we'll look at the Bondi 7 and the Clifton 7, our two most important and best fitting Hoka models in the store.